Hello everybody, welcome to Law Made Simple and Comprehensive. Today I would like us to look at the first assignment of ADL 2601, which is Administrative Law. This is a very straightforward and an interesting module, but it requires you to first go through the first pages of the study guide. You cannot just jump onto the assignment and try to answer the questions you won't understand what is going on i just want to be honest with you you just want to get what's going on here because you do not have the background information of what's uh, going on uh, with administrative law you need to understand what uh, the terms like um, administrative law relationship what does it entails or what it actually is you need to understand what is an organ of state. You need to understand um, what uh, kind of authority or what kind of power uh, does um, an organ of state has upon a subordinate body or someone who is in a subordinate position or something like that. You know, you need to first read those first um, few pages or actually. And like frankly you need to read through the whole study guide for you to understand what's going on because um, people be complaining saying that uh, the Paja module is uh, challenging and all that actually it's not it's a very straightforward module only if you get your all the background information that is required you know so um, let's start answering Okay, let's start by um, reading the factual scenario that was given to us. On the 1st of February 2022, Ms. Mavis Dube was appointed to the position of procurement manager at Itsuseng local municipality in northwest province of South Africa following the resignation of his predecessor, Mr. Bethwankom. Two months after her appointment, Ms. Dube began to review all tenders awarded by the Itsusing local municipality to service providers during Mr. Nkoma's tenure. Upon, re upon reviewing those tenders, she noticed that the municipality has awarded a tender to Libalo Constructions and Projects Close Corporation, a company that is always doing business with the municipality and owned by one of his political rivals cousin Leonard Mpora. Um, I don't really understand how that uh, word political fits on uh, the sentence right here in the sentence here. I think it's a typo of some sort because you can see that um, um, hey, <laughs> I know has I don't know if Miss Dube is now a he, but then as Colapo. So I think uh, maybe they wanted to say political rival, you know, cousin Lena Dumpura. So I don't know, but that's how I take it that they wanted to write uh, political. So there has just been an error of some sort. Okay, um, to build 200 RDP houses in the district of Lefari, district municipality in the northwest. Ms. Dube decides to cancel the preceding tender for unknown reasons. The notice was published on tender notice um, number 6 of 2023. Ms. Dube was exercising her powers as enshrined in Regulation 13, uh, subsection C of the Municipal Finance Management Act of 2003, which states that, guys, um, in my experience of um, doing uh, ADL, these um, what these um ads or i don't know what to say like this is what i'm <laughs> this quotation here ne? um most of the time ne? it's 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 false it's wrong it's not what the actual um 
maybe the actual uh, legislation or act or whatever really says they just uh, write these things just to confuse you this is just to confuse you even if you do not read it or you do not put it in your mind it won't make any difference you know like it has nothing to do with the answers actually you know it has nothing to do with the assignment they just um, trying to confuse you so even whether you ignore it or whatever but it doesn't like you all you won't even have to mention it in your answers you know it reads as follows organs of states are entitled to terminate the procurement contract if they found that they were or are irregularities irregularities during the procurement processes and or the procurement contracts have been concluded in contravention of the applicable legislation that is false guys no? following the cancellation of the tender miss dube appoints batupili consulting pitua ltd to complete the work Ms. Tempura decides to confront Ms. Dube about her decision to cancel the tender and demands reasons for her decision. Ms. Dube, Ms. Dube's reason was that she was exercising her discretionary powers as a procurement manager of the municipality and she has the powers to do so. So you guys, what you need to know, ne? Or what you are going to find out as you read through your study guide if you hadn't started, is that... Um, when uh someone who is okay guys okay let me just explain this now okay um between okay the first thing that you need to look at here is um is there an administrative law relationship between miss dube okay is there an administrative relationship um in the scenario that were given yes there is so who is the who is the what who is the state um who is the organ of state or who has the authority okay yeah who has the authority or who has uh, powers and who is in a subordinate position you know um someone who is in a subordinate position it's someone who is at the receiving end or someone who is um oh, i don't know how to explain this because i'm not even prepared for it but I just want you to understand something. Um, someone who is um, lower, like, um, okay, you see, uh, this is um, an unequal relationship. Ne? She is the manager of a municipal, a municipality, um, yeah, a municipality district. Yeah, let me put it that way. So, um, Mr. Louis, um, Mr. Mpura ne? is the she he is um lower than Ms. Dube because he he is dictated by her actions and he is also affected by the decisions that she makes, you know. Yo guys, I don't know how to explain this. Mara, what I'm trying to say is that um Ms. Tempura is lower and does not have power over or upon Ms. Dube. Ms. Dube has all the powers upon Ms. Tempura, you know? She decides what happens and Ms. Tempura has to be, maybe has to obey, has to abide or he has to like okay his rights ne, are affected by whatever decision that uh, miss dube is um is going to make so um what is an what is the definition of administrative law relationship an administrative law relationship exists between two parties we have two parties right here ne, which is leonard Mpora and miss dube ne, who is made this who are in a who are in an unequal relationship or a vertical relationship these two people are in an unequal relationship they are not in a in a horizontal one ne? you know that so one of the subjects is a person or body clothed in a state in state authority state authority or organ of state who is able to exercise that authority over a person or 
body in a subordinate position whose rights are affected by the action this is what i was trying to explain all along <laughs> your guys in english is hectic yeah so this is what i was trying to say um you, you need to first know that um you need to first ask yourself is there an administrative law relationship then you can start answering the question and you need to identify in your mind um who is in the subordinate position and who is um the organ of state or who is clothed with a state authority miss mpura miss adube is clothed with a state authority né? um because of her position or because of the title of her job or whatever um she has power to say what goes or not yeah simple as that okay let's start by um let's start uh, looking at the first person okay um this is what i was talking about look at this footnote here it says okay let me just do this okay you see here uh i just want you to this is a footnote ne? number one let's go uh, this footnote is referring to uh, what am i doing now this footnote is um referring to this ne? i just want you to notice something okay here's the footnote ne? and b note this is a hypothetical subordinate legislation and does not reflect the correct version of the original legislation see what i was talking about so just ignore it do not confuse yourself with this kind of nonsense ne? when you're busy answering your questions okay um now answer the following questions and substantiate your answers with reference to relevant legislation and case law where applicable case law Kwanala. hey all right um 1.1 Discuss the meaning of an organ of state as defined in the Constitution of South Africa, 1996. Support your answer with reference from the relevant legislation. What are we supposed to do here? We're supposed to do this. Not to say that um, we do not have the, um, the answer on the study guide. The answer is there. But what did they say to us? According to the constitution, this is the constitution, né? yeah. Okay, let me do this. Mm -hmm. I just want you to see the constitution of the Republic of South Africa, 1996, né? okay. We're on page 122. Okay, sure. Now, I want to know the definition of organ of state mm. according to the um, constitution it says here this is the part that i'm going to read <laughs> hey guys because i'm I mean, I'm tired. I mean, uh, um, the thing is, I'm hiding my. Okay, sure. Okay, this is the definition from the Constitution. It reads as follows: Organ of state means subsection A. Any part of state or administration in the national, provincial, or local sphere of government. Where does uh, Miss Mavis fit here? On the national, provincial, or local sphere of government? Where does the municipality fit? Hmm? You know the answer. Yes. So, um, subsection B. So, uh, okay, like that first sentence alone that we read, ne, it's actually telling us that Miss Mavis is the one who is uh, the organ of state. Is she is the one who is clothed, clothed with a uh, state authority, ne? Mm -hmm. Subsection, okay, subsection B. 
any other functionary or institution exercising a power of performing a function in terms of the constitution or a provincial constitution or exercising a public power or performing a public function in terms of any legislation but does not include a court or a judicial office. What is the municipality? It's a public... Um, what? Um, I don't know. Let, let me rather say um, the, 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 the municipality it, um, is there to perform public uh, function. Ne? Uh, so let's go to our study guide. Um, it says there on page twenty six. Identification of the authority, authoritative party to or in the administrative law relationship. That's why I say that you need to first understand what is administrative law relationship. If you do not understand this, I call for like a hey, forget. Okay, I forgot to say that we were reading on section 239. <laughs> hey guys, if you know something, hey, it just slips your mind. Okay, um, I just want to start reading from here now. It says, um, we have said that it may sometimes be quite difficult to identify the authoritative party. The Constitution has tried to address this difficult by provi difficulty by, by providing a broad definition of such a party in authority, calling it an organ of state. Section 239 of the Constitution. Where we were reading, just here, this is Section 239 of the Constitution, eh? As you can see, uh, let's go back to our guide. This is an important definition and you must memorize its contents. Although we're not in favor of studying... Ugh, okay, let's just leave that. Let's go to our section 30, 239 of the Constitution. What does it say? It says exactly what we read on the... Um, on the constitution eh? but uh, this is our study guide so the answer is automatically here so what you need to do is just to write everything that is there make sure that you show that it is a quotation eh? because it you know you're not going to like paraphrase it or whatever you just need to write what's written there if you feel you know but make sure that you provide the correct referencing style or format or i don't know yeah so um the the um, miss mavis miss miss mavis do is the organ of state of of um the it's was saying <laughs> what's the name It's also saying local municipality, ne? Eh. and it is a local sphere of government. Ne? Remember what it says here. Any department of state or administration in the national, provincial or local sphere. So the municipality is on the local uh, sphere. Ne? Mm -hmm. Number one, we have our, it's five marks or six, I think it's fine. Right. Second question. Considering the above facts, list the requirements for just administrative action. Okay. Um, you need to know what is a uh, just administrative action. Eh? Um, our answer is supposed to be on page seventy something.
An explanation of the concept of just administrative action. Section 33 reads as follows. This is section 33 of what? Of the Paja, ne? I don't know. Do I even have the Paja here? Oh, no, I don't. I don't, I don't, I don't. I think it's section 33 of the Paja. It can be section 33 of the Constitution. Yeah, I think so. All right. Um, it says here, just administrative action... Just administrative action, I'm sorry about that. Section 33, subsection 1 says, Everyone has the right to administrative action that is lawful, reasonable, and procedurally fair. 2. Everyone whose rights have been adversely affected by administrative action has the right to be given written reasons. Remember, like, Let's go back to our set of things. I want us to read this part. This part. Following the cancellation of the tender, Ms. Dube appoints Batupili Consulting Pitua Ltd. to complete the um, the work. Ms. Dempura decides to confront Ms. Dube about her decision to cancel the tender and demands reasons for her decision. Ms. Dube's reason was that she was exercising her discretionary powers as a procurement manager of the municipality and she has the powers to do so. So what's actually going on here? Ms. Dube decides to cancel the preceding tender for unknown reasons like she hasn't given any reason for her decision to cancel the the, the tender ne? but what does number two say of uh, section 33 of the page it says everyone whose rights have been adversely affected because remember that um mr mbura's rights have been affected because he is in the subordinate position ne? So the decision that Ms. Mavis made affected Ms. Dempura, uh, Ms. Dempura, Ms. rights, or yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, his rights were affected by her decision. So what does it say? Everyone whose rights have been adversely affected by administrative action has the right to be given written reasons. But what has she done? She, she even she even failed to give him a, a reasonable reason she just said i'm doing it because i do have the power to do it i have the authority you know yeah so um national legislation must be enacted to give effect to these rights and must a provide for the review of administrative action by a court or where appropriate an independent and impartial tribunal impose a duty on the state to give effect to the rights in subsections 1 and 2 and um, C promote an efficient administration so you can continue reading but we're looking for six me so you just need to continue reading this so just so that you, you understand what's actually going on you know so that you have a clear picture of everything yeah <laughs> i feel like it's so small so these are the requirements ne? Mm -hmm. remember it's six max ne? just want to show you something it's one two three four five six six max straightforward hey guys man i don't know i might be wrong but mm, that's what i think because one thing that you need to keep in mind is that i'm not a lecturer and i do not have the memo so not me in jail i'm just using my mind to do all these things okay um the third one third question 1.3 kindly advise on what authoritative sources of law from an administrative law perspective could labor law construction and projects 
close cooperation rely on in support of its case if the company aims to challenge the decision of the procurement manager so here we just need to um, provide a list of authoritative sources that we have in um, administrative law that is supposed to be on page it is something okay hey guys the sources of administrative law binding or authoritative sources number one the constitution of the republic of south africa 1996 two legislation three case law judicial precedent fourth common law fifth administrative practice custom or usage and ubuntu which is the sixth one um seventh international law so they are seven seven marks this is what they're looking for full stop we do not explain we do not say anything we just list them the way they are the last question says um assume that no reasons were given by the procurement manager to libalo constructions and project cc for the cancellation of its contract what remedy is available to libalo constructions and project cc if it is not satisfied with the lack of reasons provided by the procurement manager answer the preceding question in terms of the relevant provisions of power for seven marks oh i forgot to say what page is this one hey guys page 35 of the study guide <laughs> oh, guys. Yes. I don't even know who's calling me now. Um, okay, guys, what I would like to advise you here is that you look at all um, the the options that are provided here. So you are going to 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 decide which one fits. Um, on our set of facts or the facts the factual scenario that we're given ne? i would really advise you to do that before you answer this one because um i just feel like the answer is judicial review review but i might be wrong so i need you to please um find out for yourself whether you agree with me or whether you feel like you can use any other um option if i can put it that way um, the various forms of judicial control up to now we have focused only on judicial review of administrative action as a way of controlling administrative action however there are other judicial avenues for challenging administrative action or administrative decisions they include the following and we again include a review to emphasize that it is an avenue for control the first one we have statutory appeal, judicial review, interdict, mandamus, declaratory order, and the last one is defense in criminal proceedings. Okay, the last one very high, it falls out. So um you need to read through here. I can't go like you know, I can't go through all this here because of time. I really wanted to keep this video under 30 minutes because hey, I don't know man. Um, I'm finding it difficult to do something, but okay, let me quickly read it. Um, judicial review. Okay, my answer is judicial review. Just read under judicial review and find out if you agree with me. Um, yeah, then you write there because I want to keep this video under 13 minutes because I struggle to upload videos which are over 13 minutes i don't know what's going on i feel like uh, i think uh this um app has something to do with whatever so um from me to you guys um keep well and study very hard until next time